This is the DJI Cellular Dongle 2, a recently released accessory from drone maker DJI and it's compatible with the DJI Air 3 and the DJI Mini 4 Pro. Now often us YouTubers use phrases such as game changer or must have accessory but when it comes to this piece of kit right here that is most certainly the case. So what I'm going to do in this video is tell you absolutely everything there is to know about this piece of kit, tell you exactly what you need to get it working and most importantly do a flight test in a very high interference built up area just to see whether this actually does work so let's get into it. So I do have to give a bit of a disclaimer just to cover myself. This video is for informational purposes, only to review the product. And as with anything else, please confirm you are abiding by the local laws and regulations where you plan to fly. As per the DJI terms of sale, please also check with your 4G data SIM provider that the plan you have is suitable for use in an airborne aircraft. Now using 4G technology in drones is not actually new. DJI have already been doing it for years in mainland China with their original dongle. Other manufacturers such as Parrot have been using it in their flying wing already, so certainly not new. But what is new is of course the DJI Dongle 2, bringing compatibility to this technology in so much more countries, especially Europe, which of course I live. Now, while I've just mentioned that using 4G technology in drones is not particularly new, it is an absolute game changer. Just imagine if you could build a drone with a battery that just had infinite power or at least a battery that lasted a couple of hours. The idea is if you had 4G coverage in the area with which you are flying, literally there is no limit. You could just keep going well beyond the specifications in terms of distance than what DJI advertise on their products. So what do you need to get this working then? Well, first of all, you're going to need a DJI cellular dongle too. If you're using it on the DJI Mini 4, for Pro, you are going to need the Mini 4 Pro mounting kit. This is absolutely vital that you do buy this piece of apparatus. If you try to work it on the Mini 4 Pro without it, it's not going to work purely because the antennas for the 4G reception are built into the holder itself. When you do buy the DJI Mini 4 Pro mounting kit, you're going to get the holder, you're going to get the nice strap to strap it to your drone, and you're going to get the USB connector between the dongle 2 and the back of your Mini 4 Pro. You are also going to need to purchase a 4G SIM card from a participating network provider in your country. And as I mentioned in the disclaimer, please make sure that when you speak to your network provider, it is suitable for use in airborne equipment. Now, not only do you need the SIM card, of course, you're going to need a certain amount of data to be able to utilize this data network. How much will you need? Well, on my testing previously, I found that utilizing pretty much a full battery uh, using the 4G connection, I would use around 800 megabytes, okay, per flight. So do take that into consideration. Of course, it goes without saying that you are not using 4G all of the time when this is plugged in. This is basically to keep you with a strong connection when you are not using OcuSync. Whilst you are using OcuSync, you are not using data using the 4G dongle. So something for you to bear in mind. So all you need to do to fit it to the DJI mounting kit is just slide it in with the DJI facing upwards towards you and then mount the left and right antennas, strap it around the drone with this nice little hook and then of course just plug in the USB and you are good to go. It is now fitted to your drone. Now of course the DJI cellular dongle too with that data SIM card you have purchased from your network provider provides 4G connection to the actual dongle which is sitting in your drone. But what you also need is a 4G connection on your controller with which you are using to fly. Now, if you are using a mobile phone with the DJI RC N2 controller, the chances are you are going to have a cell or network connection already through your network provider that you are using to make your usual calls and texts. Now, if you are flying with the DJI RC2, it's not so straightforward, but nothing too strenuous. All you do is tether it using a mobile hotspot to your mobile phone whilst 
on location, for example. And then what the DJI RC2 does is it shares that 4G connection your mobile phone already has. Now, a third option is if you are flying from your home location or indeed a friend's or relative's house, what you can utilize is instead of having to tether it to your mobile phone, you can simply pair the DJI RC2 up to the home Wi-Fi router and utilize that network connection for your 4G connection, which works absolutely perfectly. When you buy the DJI cellular dongle 2, DJI do advise that you need an enhanced transmission service subscription. Now, the good news is the fact that you do get, when you buy the dongle, your first year completely free. At the end of that first year, if you want to continue using the enhanced transmission service, you do have to pay a yearly subscription, which you pay in a one-off payments. Here in the UK, that renewal price is £26. If you do have this accessory, you can see how much it is in your local currency by entering the DJI Fly app. And then where we go to renew, it will give you that renewal price right there. Now, I don't personally agree with this, but of course, this is what it is. So I'm providing this for informational purposes only, so you know what to expect should you buy one of these accessories. Now, just before I get into the flight with the DJI Mini 4 Pro, I have a couple of points for you to consider and think about. Of course, adding all this kit to the Mini 4 Pro, including the mounting kit and the dongle, it does push it over 249 grams. The actual weight with all this kit fitted, I measured at 292 grams. Now, of course, pushing it over 249 grams, contrary to popular belief, isn't illegal. Um, some people seem to think that it's over 249, you can't use it. That's not the case. In most countries, of course, subject to your local rules and regulations, it just means you need to fly it a little bit further away from people, that's all. But certainly, there are countries and there are uh, situations where you can take additional qualifications to fly in the same place. You can a sub 249 gram drone in a built-up area with no intentional uh, over flying, providing it is still under 500 grams. And of course, this certainly is. Now, I have to tell you that when I was flying my DJI Mini 4 Pro performing these tests, because of the added weight to the drone, I did notice it seemed to be a little bit more noisy. The DJI Mini 4 is famous for being incredibly quiet when it comes to uh, those low noise propellers, but it has to be said that when it came to flying with that additional weight, putting a bit more strain on the motors. Of course, DJI have factored this all in. You know, it's they've made this product for the DJI Mini 4 Pro, but one thing to consider is it did appear to be a little bit more noisy in my own personal opinion. Now, also because of that additional weight um, and those motors seemingly working a little bit harder, I did notice, whereas there was none on my test with the DJI Air 3, with the Mini 4 Pro, I did notice that there was a bit of a drop in battery life. No two flights are the same. I would not really be able to put it in terms of actual flight time. My guesstimation would be maybe 20% less flight time when using this dongle. But of course, that is a trade-off for potentially a much stronger connection. So by now you know what a dongle is, the fact that it exists, what you need to get it working, how it maps to the DJI Mini 4 Pro, all the information you could possibly need. So now we need to finish it off with the flight test to see just how well this does in a built up area and really push it through its paces. So let's test out this 4G dongle then once and for all. This is a benchmark test. As you can see in the top right corner, the enhanced transmission is turned fully off and we are using OcuSync alone in a very high interference area. And we are flying at the height of 70 meters, which is high enough to keep out of people's way, but low enough so we're still in that interference window. This is using OcuSync completely only, okay, to try and give us some sort of benchmark for when we rerun the test on 4G. And as you can see, we've already had that interference message. Our signal is showing orange and pretty low, but of course, OcuSync can struggle in built up areas. Already our signal has gone to red, we're 300 meters out and very quickly as we try to continue on, 339 meters, that is it, remote controller signal lost, that has given up the ghost. Now a full return to home situation has kicked in and this is where I think we really need to 
pay attention because whilst return to home is an absolutely fantastic safety feature the point i'm going to make is quite simply whilst we are in a return to home situation whilst we've got no control feed and whilst our feed is black or gray if you wish just like this we have got no control of our drone whatsoever as you can see after a few seconds the signal does come back um, as you can see it's got no 4g link whatsoever and that rc signal really is struggling dipping in between red and orange of course as we get closer it's going to re-establish that connection we're going to get a little bit of a better signal but ultimately there you go only 40 meters out give or take before that RC connection started to show as white. So now we've got a nice benchmark test. We know we got to 339 meters. Now let's rerun the test using that 4G connection. So we're back at the starting point and what we're going to do now is tap that icon and toggle on the enhanced transmission allowing us to use the 4G connection on the dongle. Of course it is vitally important that you have a 4G connection. It goes without saying if you are flying in an area where you do not have a mobile network coverage which is 4G or stronger this of course is not going to work. So if you are planning on using one of these dongles a simple test of your network's coverage checker should alleviate all of that. So let's Let's begin the flight, same altitude, same flight path, and let's just see how we get on with this turned on. Once again, the DJI RC has dropped in signal about the same as what it did before. As we fly a little bit further on, there we go, it's already swapped to red, and we are struggling and getting a little bit of lag um, where the signal really is sort of dipping in and out. However, as we get to where we lost a signal before, we are now with that 4G connection able to fly onwards. And what you will notice just now, that DJI RC icon for the actual Ocusync connection has completely gone. As you can see right there, we are flying right now well within what you would consider visual line of sight distances in a built up area, only 400 meters out. We have got absolutely no Ocusync connection between the controller and the drone, but as you will see with absolutely no latency, no lag, no issues, this drone is flying absolutely perfectly on that 4G enhanced transmission system from DJI. I think that was an absolute game changer. As we start flying back to the home point, the drone is continuously trying to re-establish the Ocusync connection. So as you can see, as we get closer, the Ocusync connection does pick back up, where that will switch over back from the 4G connection back to the Ocusync connection. So basically, what you will find is that 4G connection is really there for when the Ocusync loses its connection and completely dips out. As soon as you are flying on 4G only, once you get back into Ocusync range, Range, what it will do is switch back to Ocusync. But just to show this is no fluke, there are no screen cuts, no jumps, nothing, one continuous long flight. As you saw, I have just clicked that 4G icon, toggled the enhanced transmission back off, and we're just going to repeat the exact same flight all over again, find the exact same route, nothing's changed. Just now we're back to the Ocusync connection only, Back to those orange bars, getting a little bit further, aircraft signal interference, red RC, and let's get to a similar distance what we did before, give or take, 339, oh, we've gone a little bit further this time, 364 meters, that remote controller signal is completely lost. So just a final thought from me before I end the video, just remember, all of the worldwide drone rules, laws, regulations in your country exist for one purpose only. That is to ensure that you have a safe and effective flight with your drone that doesn't put any harm to manned aircraft or people on the ground. For me, the most efficient and effective way of doing this is to make sure you are in control of your drone at all times, giving you the ability to see and avoid any potential hazards. And well, what can I say? The DJI Cellular Dongle 2 allows you to do exactly that.